Good morning. Today is Wednesday, March the 10th, and if you're looking out a window, you'll see that it is daylight now. Uh, we are getting some great weather, and I personally feel like uh, spring is around the corner. <clears throat> I'm glad you're here. I'm glad you've joined me today. I hope I have something that's worthwhile or that you can perhaps pass along. Uh, I've been just started to, to read or actually listen to a book. I, I listen to a lot of audio books, and this one is called A Team of Arrivals. And what it's about is President Abraham Lincoln and the cabinet that he brought around him, which had all been political um, uh, competitors. And, it, and one of the things that this book says is that everybody at that table was smarter and more experienced and more eloquent than Abraham Lincoln, and yet they clearly saw him as their leader. And uh, so I, I just did a little bit more background research, and um, it's very easy to find that Abraham Lincoln was many things before he was president, but he was not a success. At age 22, he lost his job. Uh, at age 23, he was defeated for legislature. He failed in business. At age 24, at 27, he had a nervous breakdown. At 34, he ran for Congress and failed. In 39, he was defeated again. Uh, age 46, he ran for Senate and was defeated. Defeat after defeat after defeat. And yet, he may have been the greatest president that the United States ever had. So I have a question for you. Do you feel that your best days are before you or behind you? If you think, well, my best days are clearly behind me, why is that? Is it failure, disappointment? Is it because you're in transition and you think, well, maybe my age is now limiting me? Or maybe you're in indecision. Yeah, I'll tell you something if you promise not to tell anybody else. I'm 62 and I still don't know what I want to be when I grow up. And maybe one of these days I will. But allow me to give you four thoughts about facing your future. The first one is, it's about us and our character. And I believe that great people who do great things who are those that are committed to just living to exist or to consume, but rather they are committed to a cause that's bigger than themselves a reason to get up in the morning. Matthew chapter 16, verse 25, Jesus says, and I love this, if you hang on to your life, you will lose it. If we try to pervert, serve, if we try just try to live to exist, if we just try to live to consume. But if you give up your life for my sake, you will save it. So, we are committed to a cause bigger than ourselves. The second thing is, God still has big plans for you that are more than you can envision for yourself. Allow me to read uh, a verse, and, and I read a book about 20 years ago that was, that was based on, on this verse, and it's from 1 Chronicles chapter 4, verses 9 and 10. Jabez was more honorable than his brothers, and his mother named him Jabez, saying, Oh, I gave birth to him in pain. And Jabez cried out to the God of Israel, says, Oh, that you would bless me and enlarge my territory and let your hand be with me and keep me from harm so that I will be free from pain. And God granted his request. That's from First Chronicles chapter 4, verses 9 and 10. And there is a book called The Prayer of Jabez. I believe the author was Bruce Wilkinson. Now, a very fast synopsis with, with this verse is that Jabez had a predetermined legacy. His name was Payne. And he wanted to live bigger than his, his predetermined legacy. He wanted to live bigger than his name. But he also had a relationship with God. And we see that as, as, as he, he prayed. And uh, he was more honorable than, than his brothers. 
And with that, God changed things for him. God entered his, answered his request. So my little question for you is, what is your territory that you'd like to enlarge? What is it that you would like to see different? In the year 2000, as I say, 20 years ago, I was coming to the end of a year, and I think it was our sixth year of pastoring. And I came across this book. I think somebody gave it to me for Christmas. And I read it in a few hours. It's a very small book. And I began to ask God to enlarge my territory. I went through some valleys before I went through some peaks. And we thought we were going to be staying longer term in our church. We thought our territory was a bigger geographical territory, that our church would have a bigger geographical influence and a more populous influence. But actually our church went through struggles. We moved back to Moose Jaw and uh, I enrolled in marriage and family counseling and, and over an, a number of months, we had been asked several times to go to a very small, struggling street mission in Winnipeg. Eventually we did go. And when we went, it, as I say, it was very small and struggling and I didn't know anything about street mission and I, I, I didn't know anything about parachurch ministries. I only knew how to treat people like they were Jesus and that's the only vision I had for the place. Over the number of years, it, became, it grew in, in scope. It grew as a household name. We had 80 staff and our budget was six and a half million uh, dollars a year and we minister to thousands upon thousands of people every day uh, suffice it to say that that's not what I envisioned when I asked God to enlarge my territory because my vision was much smaller even going to Winnipeg to to run a little mission I had no grand vision for that so I'm simply saying that when you ask God to enlarge your territory his vision is far greater than yours are. So, fasten your seatbelt because it's going to be quite a ride that God will take you on. Now, here's my third point. God will circle back blessings to you. Remember Jeremiah. For many of us, it's one of our most favorite verses. For I know the plans that I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you and plans to give you a hope and a future. So, if we live big with a cause that's bigger than ourselves, if we pray big and ask God to, to enlarge our territory, whatever that means, don't fill in the check for him. Let God fill in the check. And then thirdly, God will circle back blessings on you and you don't know. It can be in your, in your family. It can be in your finances. It can be in your health. It can be in your emotions. There are so many ways that God blesses and prospers us. So, let me conclude with this. I'm confident in you. And more importantly, God is confident in you. So bless you today. Dream big, live big, pray big, and partner with God. And today that is our cup of faith. Cheers, and have a great Wednesday.